Welcome back everyone, I am the Executioner and today we're going to be reading a theory. This theory was submitted by a fan and this theory is about property-based banking. Now, this idea was very prominent among a philosopher named Lysander Spooner. This theory elaborates on his work and goes into how it could work with cryptocurrency and work in the modern age and how to create a currency that's backed by property. Actually, you can make multiple commodity monies. You can make silver standards a thing as well. And you can make share money. They can be converted back and forth in a free banking system, but that would have to be gradually transitioned without destroying a chunk of the world's wealth. Gold and silver standards are going to have to be reinstated eventually. It's only inevitable. It's the only stepping stone in the right direction. Lysander Spooner's Treatises on Competitive Currency and Banking, Second Chance by Rob Kiyosaki, and this particular article by the late economic theorizing engineer Paul Birch should give you insight. Now, I know some would be critical of this, but the inconvenience that may start out at first could be easily reconciled by three ways. One, the first would be the direct payment of interest during the period of suspended convertibility. Two, the second would be if individuals deposited their money at the banks. Banks could pay at a higher interest. Third, and most interesting, would be the option clause to reduce the likelihood that a bank would experience a liquidity crisis which could cause the bank to collapse, thereby lowering the risk of the bank and its note issues, which is a much better alternative than quantitative easing in the classic bank runs problem, which all fractional reserve banks have had. A great example being the Great Depression. What reasons would these be? The use of property for banking may seem pretty risky, but there are some perks to this, and that is, and private property is the best possible banking capital for everyone for these exact reasons. One, because being visible, immovable, and nigh indestructible in most cases, not factoring nuclear weapons of certain designs or severe natural disasters, it necessarily gives to the public an assurance as no other property can, the solvency of the currency from ever being subject to panic on the part of the holders of it and thus protects the bankers and the money users from all dangers of bank runs on them that fractional reserves in central banks do as a rule from all liability to be called on to redeem it, otherwise than by receiving it in payment of notes discounted. Land is advantageous because there is so much more of it than any other property. The value of property due to being essential to lives, the uses from it, and the assets that can be made from it, also adding to said value over time. Three, due to the previous reasons, it can furnish much greater amounts of currency than can be ever used. Being bank capital would not interfere with other uses on it. In fact, would make the uses even more valuable, perceivably valuable overall. The profits from assets made from the property is a clear proof. Even the holders of real estate in using it as banking capital it would ensure a vast amount of money is available and at the lowest, most stable interest rates possible. This money would be highly solvent as a result of all this. If this freedom in banking were allowed, nearly or absolutely everyone who was worthy of credit could get it at a bank, 
the banks would grant it by issuing their own notes for circulation as money. The borrowers would use them to make purchases for cash instead of buying on credit as they do now. There would be no indebtedness extent, exempt, except for the indebtedness of the borrowers to the banks and of the banks to the holders of their notes. These two forms of debt would balance out each other and be offsets of each other, thus be made to cancel out each other. So the banknotes circulating would all come back to their rightful banks in payments of the notes discounted. So this would be self-regulating and canceling out every so often. This potential system could also be applied to share monies as well. The assets made on said properties or share money could be used to pay off debts as well instead of the original property or shares. Cryptocurrencies would have their own in-use value based around property and other functions like some crypto's ability to make encrypted messages. You could make bearer shares able to convert this money and vice versa, potentially. You don't have to be a spooky corporation for the state to make this work fully. All these perks can exist under this system. This article has a so-called Dermot section with outright false claims, such as deflation is falsely alleged to be horrible, and somehow a managed currency system is more stable in ensuring stability in internal price level in exchange rates. But watch Antony Davies and several others nuke that claim, as well as the failure of the Keynesians, New Keynesians, Neo Keynesians, Post Keynesians, Monetarists, and other expressions of charlatanism, an ideology that's been long debunked by being proved unstable and ridiculous. I hope you guys liked the video. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and remember to stay free.